hi guys welcome to another video it's ndagere here thanks for coming as always for the subscribers thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it today's video is something that i landed on and i think it's very important that every time we come across these kind of videos we get to share them so that other people can also get to understand what is going on in the world but before i get into my opinions watch this clip come back and let's talk about it you know there's one great distinction between black folks and white folks <clears throat> black people have the moral high ground they do. Black people have them. When you do a comparison morally between white people and black people, you have to take away one thing, supremacy. Black people do not have a culture of black supremacy. However, white people do. So white people are narcissists, social, cultural, systemic narcissists is who we are because of our racism, because of the lies of white supremacy. How can white people have morality as long as we have bought into the lies of white supremacy. We can't. And how does that feel to know that black people have a moral high ground? How does that feel to know as a white person that you are sick, twisted, narcissistic, and immoral, highly immoral, and inhumane? I don't use the N-word. What are you doing to fight and dismantle racism that benefits you, white person? Nothing. I ignore it, I deny it, or you perpetrate it. Those are the three things we do. We ignore it, we deny it, or we perpetrate it. That's what most white people do. I hate to say it, but it's true. And that's why I say we're social narcissists and we have no moral high ground racially. We are sick, hurting people. Hurt people, hurt people. And we've been hurting a long damn time. We're hurting because of the disease of white supremacy. It's destroying white people from within. Look at the, the white nationalist party, the GOP. Not just them. All white people. Once again, I'm asking white people to understand, you don't do this just for black people as an anti-racist. You don't do it. I, I do it because I, I care about humanity and I can't stand. I, I was bullied for many years. I can't stand to see people bullied. That That's one reason I do this. It's true. But I'm not here to f save anybody except for white folks. Black people can take care of themselves. Yes, white supremacy creates victims. But don't think the only victims are black and brown and indigenous people. We are also victims as the people who are living this grand lie and this grand immorality of social, cultural, and systemic narcissism. The white people, you're hurting. Until you heal from racism, you're doomed to live an immoral and toxic life. I've seen it in my own fucking family. Don't tell me it's not true. I've seen it in my own goddamn eyes. Living under the lies of white supremacy makes you sick. Nobody's good enough. You're not good enough. You're living lies. And it's people like Donald Trump, the grandest narcissist of them all. That's why white people love Trump. Many white liberals are just as as GOPs, just in a different way. If you're not doing anything to dismantle white supremacy as a white person, again, you are the problem. And you're only hurting yourself by ignoring it. I have lost, God, so many close and dear white friends and family. When I say family, I'm talking about close family members that will not that, that we don't speak anymore they will not speak to me i reach out to them they ghost me um so it, it's incredible when when you um have an open and honest, you, you can just have a challenge i dare any of you guys just to go out to your white friends okay and just have a simple open honest conversation about race they can't do it white people can't have an open honest 90 percent of them cannot do it you know, because we're colonizers. We we just don't have the capacity to have an open conversation about race. Because if we do that, then we're acknowledging that we're racist. Then we're acknowledging that we're dirty and foul. And most white people don't have the capacity to do that. They've been taught to think of white people as pure and good and great and angelic and honest and, you know, moral and outstanding citizens. Bullshit. Most white people are fucking racist. And if they're not overtly racist, they're covertly racist by their silence, their compliance, their complacency, their apathy. Yeah, you might use the N-word, but you could give a fuck about what happens to your brown, black, and indigenous brothers and sisters. You don't give a fuck. A lot, most white people, I could dare to say, don't even know who Emmett Till is. Don't even know who Tamir Rice is. Most white people today, ask them who Emmett Till is. Ask them who. Oh, they know who Martin Luther King is? Yeah, that's the one person they know. And most of them will 
will be threatened by a person like uh, Malcolm X, but ask them who um, Trayvon is, who Tamir Rice is, who Ahmaud Arbery is. Ask them, Sandra Bland. Ask them. Most people don't even fucking know. That's the God's truth. They don't even fucking know because they don't fucking care. So I, I challenge you, I want to write in the comments any experience you've had with white people in the past, good or positive, about conversations with race. Because go up to a white person, and, you know, a friend or a family member, and just say, hey, don't you think black people deserve reparations? Watch the verbal gymnastics. Watch the, well, yes, or hell no, or, well, yes, but, 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 all fucking day long, you talk about race, you know, to, to a white person, it's, well, yes, but, 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 but. A white buddy of mine today said, you know, Dixon, not everything's about race, man. Right, buddy? I told him, I said, it ain't never been about race. Because, you know, I found out uh, that about 95% of these school shootings is by white people. Uh, almost all of them is done by white people, and there's been hundreds of them now. Hundreds of mass shootings all around the country. But imagine if it was brown and black folks that were shooting up in white schools. But, uh, yeah, that wouldn't make any difference, right? He said, well, of course not, Dixon. That ain't going to make no damn difference in gun control. It's the Second Amendment. I said, yeah, it's funny, though. In 1968, they had the Black Panthers with AK-47s and whatnot and assault rifles, and they were arming themselves. And, by God, the first time they passed... Common sense gun laws. I mean, they banned the fucking assault rifle. All this amazing shit happened. But yeah, you're right. If it was black and brown people shooting up white schools, well, no, that wouldn't make any difference. I said, you know what? You're right, buddy. It ain't about race. That's why they want to ban CRT because we ain't got no real racism in our history. That's why they want to ban wokeism and ban racial consciousness because there ain't no racism here. There never was. From slavery to assassination, Abraham Lincoln, MLK to Jim Crow, man, it ain't never been about race and it never will be. And that's why they got all that legislation to stop black books and to ban and criminalize black books and black history. Because it ain't never been about race, none of it. And we're supposed to just sweep it under the carpet and not talk about it. We're supposed to normalize denying and gaslighting white supremacy because that's the goddamn motherfucking American way, right, buddy? But this time he was getting pretty red in the face. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm just saying it's not about race, right? The KKK in Tennessee founded in Pulaski, Tennessee was never about race. Those three state representatives, two of them being expelled today and the white one not being expelled for the exact same behavior. Not about race. You're right. Nothing in America is about race. And that's why they're fighting so hard to not talk about race. Because if we don't talk about it, we'll never fix it. And the system and the culture of white supremacy will keep right on shining throughout the land. And in reality, that's what you want, my friend. The one who says, not everything's about race. You're right. Not everything's about race in the mind of a white person. But if you're not white, every fucking thing is about race. But to talk about it as a white person makes you uncomfortable, makes you have to face your own fucking immorality, your own fucking inhumanity. Wow. Can you imagine that as a white person having to face your own immorality and inhumanity? That's too much. You should just be able to sweep it on the carpet, keep the system alive, continue to benefit, have privileges. That's what it's all about, right? You're right. That's how white supremacy works. And that's why it'll never be fixed until you get uncomfortable and face the fucking truth as white people. Let's just say we're probably no longer friends. As we've seen in the video, that is a white man who came on the internet to call out his people and not even call them out, but to say the truth of what is really going on in the world. Like, he's this person who admits that as a white person, he's privileged, he has a lot of things that he accesses just because of his skin tone, and he acknowledges that. And he also said he's not there to save the black people, which I am also understanding. He can't save the black people, but he can only talk about the things that he's able to. And it's so crazy that his own people, like he said, don't want to talk to him anymore. They ghost him. The friends that he actually had no longer wants to talk to him. His co-workers don't want to talk to him. His friends don't want to talk to him. And he also said he has a white friend who came to him and said to him that not everything is about race, which I also find kind of funny because in the world that we live in, everything revolves around race. And for him as a white person, acknowledging and knowing that I have this color and because of it, there are some things that I don't get to experience 
uh, socially in the environment, in the community, in the world. Like there's a lot of things that white people don't experience that people like me experience on a daily, you know, like getting on a train and someone doesn't want to sit next to you, like not being allowed to go with my natural hair to school. I've seen a lot of videos where black children, black students are not allowed to have their own natural hair in schools because they use excuses of, oh, it's not proper for the school regulations and whatever, which I don't think white kids face. You know, you just wash your head and you're free to go to any school that you want. I've had a lot of people that have to change names to apply for jobs. I've had a lot of people that have to change their names and actually fake to put their white friends if they want to get in certain areas in America, which is, is crazy that if someone comes out to confront you and tell you that, you know what, we need to speak about these things that are going on in our country and in the world that we as white people need to acknowledge that we are privileged and the racism to continue is because we also allow it and the systems that we have allow that to happen but no 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 no. they don't want to be confronted and i like that he also said if you have white friends like i always say on this platform i have white friends in my life are you able if you have those white people to talk about the the issues that are happening on your people as a black person if you're not able to have those conversations with your white friends as you call them and they are not able to show you some kind of understanding or listen to you or even engage into understanding what you're saying you should not be friends with those people like you, you just can't you just can't so i love that he acknowledges that he has privilege and he also acknowledges that he sees the racism in his own community that they don't want to talk about but they always bring it out in the open i did a video of russian and ukrainian uh refugees who had the audacity to make parties and set up bars and have restaurants in Sri Lanka where they say only white people are allowed to access those places in a country that gave them refuge. What does that show you that these people only want to always be served and they would do anything to separate themselves from the people they even invade like you guys are refugees in this country you chose to go to this country but you still want to separate yourself and act like you are somehow better when you are in fact a refugee who doesn't have a home who doesn't have a house who doesn't have a country literally in that moment and so it shows that there's a lot of things that these people do but they don't want to acknowledge it and it's like when we come out and speak about these things then we are the bad ones we are the ones making noise we're the ones that are ungrateful we should appreciate that the white people literally invented everything they are the ones that built everything they are the ones that made the world a better place for everyone which i don't think is true and we all know it's not true but it's so shocking that even when their own people come out to call on their bs they have to be cut down they have to be shut down they have to be rejected so it's a little bit sad that when people come out to speak about these issues or racial issues that are affecting people of brown skin or dark skin or even the white people themselves then uh, we have to be separated people don't want to involve themselves like the same way i always tell you here on this platform that these people don't want to acknowledge that they have the privilege or the things that their ancestors did. But when it comes for them benefiting in the society, you know, not being uh, policed because of their skin tone, not being asked a lot of things, then it's okay. But when you talk about the atrocities that were committed by their people in history, then they don't want to associate or, or even listen or even engage. Or they feel like it shouldn't be talked about. Why are you making everything about race like how this man said his friend told him i really find that behavior as being a hypocrite a coward and it's really not okay also the funny thing is these people don't want to forget about their histories and the atrocities that happened to them but they want us to forget for example when it comes to world war ii they don't want to forget about it because it affected them so it's always in the movies it's always talked about it's always learned about when it comes to what happened to the jews people it's always like something that is brought up for for them to remember the atrocities that happened to them but they don't want to accept and acknowledge when it comes to what their ancestors did to other groups of people like when african people come out and talk about colonization for example myself or slavery that happened or the things that are still happening in the continent then they're like no like why why are you concentrating in the past don't bring those things like you know things happened i was not in existence in that time let's move forward i was not in existence in that time and i'm still facing the consequences of those situations that happened in 2024 
why am I allowed to accept that, but you're not allowed to accept the same things that happen with you as well with your ancestors in history to my people as well as to the things that your people did to other people. You don't want to acknowledge that. But no, 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 no. I should forget about my history and the things that you did to my people. But you, you should not forget about the World War II and the atrocities that other people did to you. That should not be forgotten. Make it make sense. It's also crazy that the only time they show interest when it comes to, let's say, uh, promoting or investing in in African people's trauma or black people's trauma like the slavery movies that they like to invest in a lot yeah white people really invest a lot of time and money when it comes to seeing pain of black people when it comes to seeing pain of brown people when it comes to seeing black people being saved like the way you see a lot of organizations always putting black faces for them to show that they need to come and save us. I'm not saying everyone is the same. I will not say all white people are the same because if this one came out to speak about the things that he's not comfortable with and he's not okay with, like the privilege he carries, like the racism that is happening in the country and he's able to talk about it, I don't think it's relevant to put him as in the same box as these other people that don't want to also look into the things that are going on into the world. They want to distance themselves from situations. And I think a lot of them do. Also, he talked about this innocence kind of picture that they portrayed or put on themselves where they see themselves as the saviors of everybody. Like the way they put their faces on the face of God as Jesus also, whatever. Like the way they come in and want to act like the saviors in other countries where in fact they are the same people that invade or sponsor wars that happen in those countries but still want to come out and play, you know, hero at the same time like the way they come from let's say europe to africa to save the african children i'm not saying it's a bad thing it's a good kind of act but i think like some people use it as an excuse to see themselves as heroes i've talked about stories where these people come in africa in uganda and they do things that hurt children that hurt people but you know because they are this they are let go i've talked about a story before of a white woman who came to uganda as a missionary and almost a hundred kids lost their lives under her care which she didn't even have any means to because she wasn't a doctor but she got away with it i've talked about videos where white people come into africa to now make protests about sexuality of people because they want to see themselves as heroes i've talked about how missionaries have been taking advantage of people I've talked about a lot of things that these people come and do in the continent. They come to pretend to be charity givers, but they end up taking money and not doing what they've been saying they are going to do. A lot of them are in Africa as NGOs, but they, they do things that hurt African people or other people. Those are things that are not talked about. And even when their people come out and speak about those things, they are silenced. Because there's this thing they have in them, like whatever happens to us, whatever we do, it should stay in us. We shouldn't bring it out in the in the world. We should, we should preserve this picture that we've always had you know being this kind source being this saviors being this sense that god created to save the world to save the world <laughs> it's really sick in 2024 that that's the mindset that majority of them carry is crazy they have this kind of like picture of them being these sweet innocent beings that don't do harm to anybody but in actual sense they are the ones that are always hurting other people on this planet they are the ones that are always going to other countries and stealing other people's cultures and still come out and be like oh we invented this we are the ones that invented this if you look into the museum of britain it's full of indigenous brown black people artifacts there's no white artifacts in the british museum what does that show you? Are those the same people that talk about civilization that they invented it? But if you come out and say these things, then they feel attacked. I've seen a lot of videos and clips and news where these people out of nowhere get guns and randomly go and shoot at students, young teenagers, kindergarten kids, at people, randomly. These people, not these people, not black people, but these. But that is not something they see as evil. They don't see it as horrible. It's not horrible. In fact, it's just a mental illness. That person, this person who goes and shoots a bunch of people randomly, is just mentally disturbed. But a person like this, who probably, let's say, gets a drug and sleeps on the street, and maybe hits someone, not with a gun, but like maybe assaults someone randomly, that's a serial killer. There's, there's no mental illness involving this person. But when it comes to this one,
it's mental illness. We all know mental illness happens. You know, how can you even say everything is not about race? How can you say everything is not about race? Like how? Make it make sense. So it's nice to see that the world is waking up to the truth. Even their own people as white people are waking up to the truth that this picture of them being angels and holy and humble and sweet and kind is not really what they truly are. Especially if you look into the history of, of what they've been doing and what is still going on. They are not really that innocent. So I'm not telling white people that you should just move around the world, you know, feeling small. No, you shouldn't. But just accept that the things that are happening today in 2024 are not things that are equal for everybody. And if you want to fight the systems that are going on, speak up about it. Because the more you speak up about it, the more things are going to change. The more people are going to understand. And why I like bringing these kind of videos on this platform is the more other people that look like this man see this video, they try to understand, they listen, and they get to know that, oh, okay, this is, this is, this is not right. This is not okay. We should really do better. So I think it's very important that we should give these people platforms, like I said. And I love, I really love coming across these videos. And I do appreciate this man and the, and the others that do the same thing. It means a lot to me. I don't know about you out there, but to me, I appreciate it. Yeah, guys, that is it for me in the video. Let me know what you think about this. I could go on and on and on and on. But yeah, let me stop here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.